Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q1 FY25 Earnings Conference Call of Eris Life Sciences Limited. We have with us on the call today Mr. Amit Bakshi, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. V. Krishna Kumar, Chief Operating Officer and Executive Director, Mr. Sachin Shah, Chief Financial Officer, and Ms. Kruti Rawal, Head Investor Relations. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Please note this call is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. V. Krishna Kumar, Chief Operating Officer and Executive Director of the company. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good evening, everybody, uh, and welcome to our uh, quarter one uh, conference call. So before we uh, dive into the details, uh, it's probably useful to take a couple of minutes to, uh, you know, articulate how we think about our business, how how the business is structured. Uh, there's been a lot of change in the last few months. Uh, this also gives you a sense of how this presentation is organized. So uh, we have two uh, business units, strategic business units. One is domestic branded formulations, DBF, which accounted for 90% of our Q1 revenue. And then we have Swiss parent rules, which is our exports focused business, which accounts for 10% of Q1 revenue. Now within domestic branded formulations, we are calling out two uh, separate pieces, the base business and the biocon business. So the base business consists of, uh, you know, everything uh, that's been uh, amalgamated, including all the derma piece uh, uh, and everything, which is fully integrated part of Paris. And the biocon business, which is again being structured into biocon one and biocon two. Uh, so Biocon 1 is the piece that we acquired in November 23, and Biocon 2 is the portion that was acquired most recently in early April. Uh, so we are calling out uh, these these various segments and this presentation. We are giving you a lot of color about, you know, how the Biocon first piece is done in Q1, uh, how the Biocon 2 piece is done in Q1, and we are also giving you a sense of how we expect these segments to perform through the year. Uh, so it's uh, probably useful to let you know at this stage that uh, now we will revisit these pieces in Q4. So, you know, once we set out a guidance on how we expect them to perform, we'll come back to you in Q4 and tell you that, you know, how, how they perform vis-a-vis -vis expectations. But we won't necessarily be calling out this level of detail on these pieces every quarter. So with that context, let's move ahead. We start with the base business. Uh, so happy to share with you that Eris now ranks among the top 20 companies in the market. So just as a reminder, we went public in 2017 and at that time we were ranked 29. So the company has gained nine ranks since the IPO. Uh, today we have five brands with more than 100 crores of revenue. Uh, this includes Basalog and Insugen. And we have 12 brands with revenues of 50 to 100 crores. In terms of quarter one, as per the AVAX uh, report, the covered market for us grew at 8.1% and we beat the covered market by 460 pips. Uh, so 12.7% is where we landed for Q1 uh, and four out of six therapies saw market beating growth. Uh, oral anti-diabetes market share inching, inching towards 6% and uh, very good growth in all our uh, big brands. And also in terms of new product launch and scale up, uh, we rank number third in the market in terms of count and value for new products. Moving on to the financial highlights for the base business, we had an organic revenue growth of 10% in quarter one. The gross margin in quarter one was 86%, which is up by nearly 300 basis points on a year on year basis. The EBITDA margin for Q1 was at 39%, which is up by 185 bips on a year-on-year -year basis. This was again due to a mix of productivity gain, gross margin improvement, and better fixed cost leverage. And it's also, you know, worthy calling out that 
our derma portfolio gross margin was up 100 bips in 80 percent you might recall that we told you that we started manufacturing the derma products in house from january so this is some of that getting reflected and fixed costs as a percentage of revenue are down by 97 bips year on year so in terms of guidance for the year we are looking at an organic revenue growth of 12 to 14 percent with an EBITDA margin of 37%. This is for the base business. Now moving to the Biocon 1 business segment. So very, uh, very strong start to business integration. Uh, this is a portfolio that we have acquired in November. So dermatology and nephrology. It's been about six to seven months since acquisition. Uh, this portfolio clogged the Q1 revenue growth of 16%. Uh, with a 40% growth being seen in the top seven power brands in both Derma and Nephro. The, the piece has a Q1 YPM of close to seven and a half lakhs. The teams are settled down. They are all well integrated. We, we augmented the Derma team to around 80 reps. Uh, the gross margin for this piece has improved by 1500 basis points in quarter one. So you might recall that at the time of acquiring, we had a 50% GC, which is now at 65%, and we expect further upside. The Q1 EBITDA margin for this piece was at 39% versus 19% at the time of acquisition. So again, a 2,000 BIPs gain in just six to seven months from acquisition. In terms of guidance for the year, 125 crore revenue, which is a 25% growth on the acquired base, with an EBITDA margin of 36%, which is up by 1,700 BIPs from the acquired base. Moving forward to the second Biocon piece, which was acquired in early April. So this piece has uh, insulin, oncology, and critical care. Again, integrated well ahead of schedule, we saw a 13% revenue growth in quarter one with a YPM of close to 8 lakh rupees. Basalog and insulin, very strong early traction, uh, two more hundred pro brands in, uh, you know, in the, in the kitty. Onco critical care, we have lined up a lot of new product launches. Swiss is manufacturing a good portion of the critical care portfolio. In terms of gross margin and EBITDA margin, this represents what we acquired the business at. So 40% gross margin and 90% EBITDA margin is what it came with, and, and that is where it is. And we expect a further upside of up to 1,000 bips in gross margin, driven by sourcing initiatives. And in tandem with that, an expected improvement in EBITDA margin as well. In terms of outlook for the year, uh, we are looking at Basalog and Insugen to do a combined revenue of 280 crores, which represents a 40% growth over the acquired base. So if I add the Exulin and Exclar, which are the homegrown insulin products, our insulin franchise for this year should land at about 340 to 350 crores. The Biocon 2 segment, we expect a revenue of around 460 crores, which represents a 28% growth on the acquired base with an EBITDA margin of 28%, which is an improvement of 900 BIPs from the acquired base. So this is the domestic branded formulations Q1 financial summary, all three pieces put together, revenue of 632 crores for the quarter, which is close to a 40% growth, EBITDA of 225 crores for the quarter. The EBITDA margin, 36% for the quarter, but 39% excluding Biocom and a YPM of close to 5.7 lakhs. So dissecting this further, we have given you the PNL for uh, the DBF segment. Uh, similar set of numbers, but I think the thing that really stands out here, uh, which we are happy to share, is the fixed cost synergies from integration have really started coming in. So we saw a gross margin reduction of close to 600 BIPs in Q1 because of change in product mix, Biocon coming in. But we also saw a reduction of around 450 BIPs in fixed costs as a percentage of sales. So leading to a Q1 EBITDA margin dip of around 140 BIPs. And in terms of guidance for the year, we're looking at a revenue of 2,600 plus crore with an EBITDA margin of 36%. And this is something we would like to call out uh, that you know the way the business has evolved, uh, it's evolved from a specialty business to a specialty plus super specialty business. Uh, so 
you know, the addition of segments like critical care, oncology, and nephrology, uh, these are super specialty segments which are still growing at, you know, 10% plus volume growth per annum. And uh, we're also happy about the fact that despite nearly doubling, uh, this is still like a chronic subchronic business for more than 85% you know of the turnover so this is this is something that results in significant headroom for growth going forward moving on to swiss parentals uh, q1 financials revenue of 73 crores with an of 26 crores uh, in terms of guidance for the year we are looking at a revenue of 330 crores with an ebit of 115 crores which represents a top line growth of around 14% and an EBITDA growth of around 30%. Uh, a lot of building blocks being put in place, uh, new regulatory inspections and qualifications, uh, expanding the product pipeline. They have an order book of nearly 130 crores for delivery and so on. So, so looking good as of now. This is the consolidated PNL for the quarter. Total revenue of 720 crores, which represents a 54% growth. Again, Q1 margin movement also reflects the fixed cost synergies. So at a gross margin level, we are at 75%, which is down more than 800 pips, again, due to business mix and product mix. But the EBITDA margin level, we are down only 164 pips because fixed expenses as a percentage of revenue are down by more than 660 pips. Q1 EBITDA of 250 crores consolidated, which represents a growth of 47%. So this is the full impact of all amort and depre and finance costs. Uh, and book tax rate has increased as uh, guided. We continue to pay cash tax at 17%. So the Q1 PAT of 89 crores reflects all this impact. Cash flow from operations for the quarter was at 70% of EBITDA. At a cash EPS level, uh, we saw a growth of 10%, and net debt as of 30th June stood at 2,700 plus crores. We'd like to share uh, an update in terms of, you know, an acquisition of an approved LL site. LL is loan license manufacturing. So this was a this is a site uh, in Bhopal, uh, which was built to Biocon quality specs. Uh, very, very good quality uh, fill finish facility for insulins and designed as a broad spectrum biosimilar fill finish facility to handle a wide range of biosimilar products. Uh, they have capacity which is rolling for liquid vials and we will also look to add cartridges and pre-filled syringes and it has attractive benefits under section 115 BAB. Now, if you look at the thesis for this, I think we would look at it from two perspectives. One is that this site is a key stepping stone to realize our biotech vision. So in a lot of ways, we're looking at this site to be a biotech hub with injectable manufacturing facility across a wide range of presentations, which is vials, cartridges, and PFS, and across a wide range of product categories, insulins, analogs, GLP ones, maps, and so on. And the second point is this site really enables us to get GLP ready because an approved fill finish site is the most critical component of the last mile in building competitive advantage for a scalable and profitable GLP play. So I think in the GLP business, I think having a, having a cartridge filling line of this caliber is probably the most valuable asset that, you know, one can have today. So, so we have a lot of, uh, plans for the site in terms of, you know, where it can potentially take us. And in terms of the whole buy versus, buy versus build rationale, we see that, you know, this, this site has reduced at least two years for us in terms of time to market compared to the greenfield operation. And we will immediately realize a margin improvement in our insulin segment, which has significant scale now, 340 to 350 crores is the outlook we have given for the year. And we see that as soon as we move to the site, we will see a margin bump of at least 1,000 bips. So this really sets us, sets the stage for our large molecules play. Putting it all together, what does the year look like? So we're looking at a DBF revenue of 2,600 crores with EBITDA margin of 36%. Uh, and this is how it breaks up between the organic piece and biocom. 
Uh, at a console level, we're looking at a revenue of 3,000 plus crores with an EBITDA margin of 35%. And in terms of uh, expenditure for the year, the site acquisition is 105 crores and we envisage an additional capex of 100 to 120 crores on the various biotech segments that we spoke about. And this factors in everything as laid out in terms of debris amount, interest costs, cash tax rate and operating cash flow ratio. We remain committed to rebuilding balance sheet strength. So this is the balance sheet strategy that we had shared with you at the end of the last financial year that we would want to reduce the debt to EBITDA ratio to less than 2x in 18 months. So we are on track. So by the end of fiscal 25, net debt of 2600 crores or slightly below and by fiscal 26, net debt of around 2000 crores. Uh, that's where we see us going. So in closing, calling out our five strategic priorities for the year, the base business deliver the organic growth with the EBITDA margin of 35-37%. In the Biocon piece, we're looking at an overall revenue growth of 27% with a margin expansion of close to 1000 BIPs. Swiss parent rules deliver the financials 330 crore revenue with a 35% EBITDA margin, but more importantly, build the base for, you know, accelerated growth in export markets as well as oral solid exports, rebuild balance sheet strength as per guidance, and really take tangible next steps in terms of our large molecule play, which is both in terms of manufacturing capability and product basket. So that brings us to the end of this presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, please click on the raise hand icon tab available on your toolbar or on the QA tab available on your screen. Kindly turn on your mic when the operator announces your name. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We'll take a first question from Dhruv Maheshwari from Perpetuity Ventures, LLP. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity. I have a few questions. The first one is regarding the cardiac portfolio, uh, which has been constantly underperforming the IPM since the last few years. And this trend has also continued for this year as well. So if you can highlight the reason behind it and what are the initiatives being taken to get this segment back on track? And my numbers are according to the IQVIA database. Yeah. So uh, you're right. Even in, in, even in AVAX, the data kind of looks similar. Uh, but if I remember correctly, June, we had come very close to the market. We were still behind, but I think 100, 150 basis. So what's the basic reason if you, if you go into the detail is Zion. This was Sacubitol Rosatin, which we launched, which actually got to a five crore monthly run rate. And when the generalization happened, and we actually ran short of uh, stocks, so we couldn't, uh, you know, service the market three, three, four months before the LOE happened. And that is the loss which we created, and which we have not been able to kind of, you know, get back. So primarily coming from one brand, which is Zio, which reflection of Zio now is more like one and a half crores per month from a peak of 5 crores. So that's something which is it does. Uh, but I am quite okay to say that from next quarter onwards, we would be hitting the market numbers and third quarter onwards, you will see us uh, getting ahead of it. Primary, reason, prime, uh, primary two reasons. One is we have got two of our products which have been approved, which uh, you remember we told our, from our R&D basket. One is DAPA Preclosed and Metoprolol, which has already been approved. We will be launching next month. And the second is DAPA Preclosed with Bisoprolol, which also would, uh, has been approved. We should be launching it in the next month or the next month. So Q2 will see two solid launches in cardiology, especially heart failure. So that's the plan. 
from a cardinal point of view. Got it. Uh, the next one is regarding the DNA. Uh, so during Q4 FY24, the guidance was about uh, 285 crores for FY25, which has been revised to 305. So what makes us uh, the majority of the difference between these two numbers? Dhruv, we are not clear what uh, the question yeah. is about. Depreciation. Depreciation. Uh, the, depreciation. Yeah. So it, it was revised from 285 to 305. within this yeah, presentation so what we what we put out in q4 were estimates now what we have taken the actual depre and amort that has come in q1 we have just annualized it and give it given you the kind of what the year is looking like so it was basically an estimate versus a uh, actual accrual not nothing major got it got it uh, these were the two questions i had thank you thank you thank you Before we take the next question, would like to remind participants to ask a question. Please click on the raise hand icon tab available on your toolbar, or on the Q&A tab available on your screen. The next question is from Kunal Damesha from Macquery. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good evening. Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Please. Okay. Hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, the first one on the, uh, I mean, if you can help me understand the clean base of FY24 for our base business uh, in terms of you know revenue and EBITDA, on which we have provided guidance of revenue growth of 12 to 14 percent and EBITDA margin of 37 percent. That we take. Kunal, the clean base is around 1850. 1850 revenue and EBITDA. The base business EBITDA that we have given you, which is thirty-seven uh, percent last year. What did you check in the third year? There in the third. Is there in the chart? Base business of thirty-seven percent. So thirty-seven uh, percent mm-hmm. margin yeah, stays the same. It's there on the slide seven. Base business EBITDA thirty-seven percent. That's that's a reference point. Which is Q Q one or he's asking for the entire year? It was round about in the same year. Uh, this is Q124, right? I am asking about the full year FY24. Kunal, let us kind of get get this number and give it to you. It will be in that vicinity sure. what Kiki is saying. Yeah, but if you are looking at okay. the base point level kind of clarity, we can get back to you. The revenue is in the range of 1850. Okay. No, I am I am just you know asking from a perspective as to what kind of EBITDA margin improvement for the base business that we are making in uh, on a year on year basis, and then uh, you know what would drive that. Uh, since we are expecting strong growth of 12 to 14 percent, I naturally assume that there will be some gains on uh, productivity, etc., for the base business. Right. So uh, then that should also translate to the uh, improvement in margins. Yeah, very fair. I think we have called out 37 percent margin for the base business in FY25. So you are saying what is the equivalent number in FY24? So we'll come back to you with the exact number. Uh, sure. Growth will be, I think, margin expansion will be a combination of the three levers that we called out in Q1, which is productivity gains, gross margin, and mm. fixed cost synergies. Yeah, Kunal, you're right. It sure. should happen, but we are at this point of time, we are happy to call it at 37 percent and wait a while to see how it kind of uh, kind of comes up. And and uh, uh, this 1850, sorry to harp on this 1850 would include Oaknet or anything that we have bought one year before, right? Like yes, enough. Yes, it 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 includes the Oaknet, Glenmark, Redis, but it does not include any Biocon. Does not include Biocon. Okay, perfect. And 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 uh, uh, the Swiss parental revenue for this quarter is entirely exposed. I'm sorry, your voice is breaking, sir. Uh, is it clear now? Yes. Go ahead, please. Yeah. yeah. So I'm saying that the uh, Swiss parental uh, revenue is it all uh, exports in this quarter? Uh, yes, Kunal. Whatever we have shared with you, 73 crores. That's all export revenue. Okay. And and have we and when we say that we have started some critical care products, etc. 
uh, that would have been included in our uh, DA, DBF revenue, domestic business revenue. Uh, so of six thirty two crore. Yeah. So the sale is included in domestic branded formulations, and uh, okay. any intercompany is eliminated when we do the consolidation. So whatever you see, seventy three no. crores in Swiss is clean revenue. Okay. Okay. Kunal, Perfect. Kunal, and, the standalone, yeah. Kunal, Kunal, hi, Sachin here. The standalone yeah. revenue of uh, Swiss is ninety two crores, but what mm -hmm. we have shown is seventy three. It is after elimination of intercompany transactions. So that's only one counting which is sold forward by Eris. So Swiss sells to Eris. Eris sells forward. Hmm. 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 In domestic business and in yeah. the international business, the same whatever Swiss had a business model that continues. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And at the end of quarter one, uh, what would have been our, uh, you know, MR strength and uh, you know how should we look that uh, over? This year, or maybe um, you know, coming one or two years. Kunal, our DBF MR strength is close to 3700 plus now, so more than 560 reps added through the two biocon deals. So that's where we stand. We don't have any plan, Kunal, as of now, to increase the head counts uh, for this year, and next year, of course, there would be plan. This year, we are looking to consolidate. Sure, sure. And this includes the uh, first line business managers? No, these are representative. Okay, okay. So, so shall I add like ten percent more to that? No, that that number will be bigger, Kunal. We'll get to you. But generally, okay. we talk because we talk YPM, so we generally give the uh, representative now. On the That's MR. The but okay, but my understanding is ABMs also like generally they are on the field only, right? Yeah, of course, they are on the field. There are other managers also on the field, but YPM is derived from the representative. So the general practice MR. is to okay. represent MR members. Sure, sure. I have more questions. I'll join back to you. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from Kunal Randeria from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good evening, and hope uh, I'm audible. Uh, so my first question on the acquisition that you made, um, the reason, see, I think the entire reason for doing this JV with MJ Biofarm was to expand into insulins and, uh, you know, GLP ones, uh, where they would be responsible for supplying uh, the products and manufacturing and uh, things like that. So just wondering what prompted you to acquire this asset now? Uh, Mr. Randeria, can you self-mute whenever you're not asking a question? Thank you. So please go ahead. So boss, look, what you are saying is absolutely right. The scale which we are now acquiring in insulin, the scale is such that it might not, we will not be able to service that from uh, MJ. Uh, we are looking at some 350, 360 crores by the end of this year. And the growth is quite good. So therefore we had to have a second parallel site available for us. Uh, otherwise also, you know, uh, this business, as KK told you, we are looking for gross margin improvement and more control over the entire uh, supply chain. So these were the reasons, uh, primarily because the, you know, the value and the volumes were beyond MJ2 kind of supply. So that is the primary reason. Got it. Thanks. And just se secondly, on uh, Biocon 2, uh, margins today are like 19%. Uh, I mean, can they go back to company level kind of margins in the maybe next couple of years? So we are giving a guidance of 28% for the Biocon 2 piece and overall 33% for both Biocon 2 together. 30%. No, fair enough, sir. What I meant was maybe the next, maybe next two or three years, can they go to oh, yes. like mid 30s, late yes. 30s? Was the day our plan right. start functioning completely? We, we, we should be there. Got it. So which means that in the next couple of years, we should expect a console level margins to be somewhere in late 30s. Yeah, yeah. Console level market margin even this year would be in late 30s. But if this happens, it, it, it has a chance to kind of beat that. Got it. Uh, I have a few more questions, Ajay. Sure. Thank you. 
Before we take the next question, would like to remind participants to ask a question. Please click on the raise and icon tab available on your toolbar or on the QA tab available on your screen. The next question is from Bino Pati Parampil from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, um, can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, good evening. Uh, just a quick clarification on the tax rate. Uh, so the cash tax rate you have mentioned is 17%. Uh, the reported rate for the quarter was 22.5 roughly. Uh, would that be the rate for the full year as well? Yes, we expect that to be around 25% tax rate. 24 uh, the, the annual tax rate. Yeah. Annualized. Okay, great. Thank you. So the man, man, what will happen is now, look, we were 80% manufacturing ourselves. And now we are only doing 60% in-house. 40% has gone out. And the, the major region is the biocon piece. So when we build our plant, this is also under the same, what is it called, Kriti? Section 115 BAB. Yeah, so this is also 115 BAB. So once the transfer happens, we'll get two kind of runways. One is the margin expansion and the other is a tax benefit. So going forward, we want to come back to that 80%. And that's where the work is going on. Understood. So when you um, transfer, when you shift manufacturing to that plan, the reported tax rate will come back to 17-18%. Uh, yeah, at some point of time, yes. At some, if they're able to achieve that 80%, this is work in progress. But incrementally, you will see that you know more and more things are coming up, coming inside. Understood. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please click on the raise and icon tab available on your toolbar or on the QA tab available on your screen. We'll take the next question from Vijay Karpe from Sriram Life. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. I just have one question. Uh, so, uh, I appreciate the rationale which has been given for the latest acquisition, um, but as per the management commentary which we had given in the uh, fourth quarter, we had said that there will be no more acquisitions and it will be all about putting the head down and uh, focusing on execution. So, uh, do, can we expect some more acquisitions or would this be the last uh, acquisition? No, boss, if you look at our commentary now, we had put in 70, 80 crores for a greenfield project. So actually nothing has changed. That 70, 80 crores of CAPEX has moved here. So uh, the plan has not changed. The only thing which has changed is from a greenfield to a brownfield. Otherwise, it remains the same. And uh, I reiterate that it's again heads down execution, no acquisition unless and until we, our balance sheet comes back in that order. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. We'll take a question from Kunal Damesha from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity again. So uh, one on the Ahmedabad plant, uh, I think last quarter we had said that there's some drag of about 30 crore on EBITDA. So what, uh, what's the current drag on the EBITDA from the plant and what's the current utilization? So Kunal, the plant is ramping up very well as we speak. So just to give you a sense, uh, this year we are looking at a 70% increase in throughput from the plant. But the operating cost increases 3% over right. last year. So the unabsorbed fixed costs, which we had called out last year, I think it was to the tune of 17, 18 crores, if I recall. So that will be substantially lower. Uh, I mean, quarter four, it should go down to zero. But I think at an annual level, we'll probably be down to less than five crores. Okay. So this 30 crore number that I have was for full year. Yeah, yeah, no, that was a combination of other factors also. Correct. Happy to get on to a separate call and go through that, but there were other items in the 30 crores. Yeah, I think Kunal, it had some acquisition cost, it has some SAP cost. It and had then, some one-time uh, items, yeah. which came into four. Yeah. Which was a significant number. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. And, uh, so that is fine. And on this, uh, debt reduction, uh, 
we are expecting only around 400 crores debt reduction right versus we should be generating ocf of at least around uh, 700 crores this year yeah yeah yeah, so this year, uh, OCF, yes, you are right. And then we have to service the interest out of that, which is close to 240 crores. And then uh, okay. you have the capex, which we called out between the acquisition and the organic capex. So net of that, whatever is there will go towards the servicing. And that should get us to that 2600 or, you know, slightly lower kind of a number by the end of the year. So, and this... Uh... Uh, beyond acquisition capex, is it just the maintenance or uh, addition of lines or? Uh, yeah, so we called out uh, all the biotechnology areas. So I think insulins is one piece which is this acquisition, and then we have maps and hormone. So as we have called out, we would like to really build a strong packet uh, to uh, get into a biotechnology play. So this is all going towards that. Nothing, nothing maintenance nature here. This is all uh, creating a capability. So, Kunal, if you look at fill finish, right? Yeah, yeah, fill finish, fill finish. There's no DS as of so, now. It's, it's all fill. So, how many how many lines we are putting? In which uh, plant? Like the entire 120 crore which we are using for our internal capex consumption. How many manufacturing lines will we have? So, Kunal, what happens? Uh, la the la uh, final line is something which is not, which is only incremental cost. We have to actually make provision for lines. So we are, uh, it depends upon how much sales we are anticipating. So for example, in insulin, we are putting, putting four plus two, four for the vials and two for the cartridges. Uh, okay. The hormone plant is very, very early days. We are just kind of digging it up. So for maps, we will be putting only two lines. Mm. So uh, depending upon that, but Important thing from, from my side is, Kunal, you look at the way, uh, you know, the product mix is happening. We are shifting from a speciality to a little bit of a super speciality also. And with mm. this, uh, with this product, and you know, we are becoming a little product company, a little tech company. And with all this coming through, you know, we will be participating in, you know, what some people call, you know, high resistance or, you know, whatever. Huh? High entry barrier. High entry barrier businesses or, you know, low competition businesses or the future businesses. So that's the, that's the mood point. And we think that the Bhopal facility gives us, because, you know, I don't agree with KK when he says two years. Because getting the licenses itself sometimes takes one and a half, two years. So building plus the licenses. And, you know, biotech licenses are, uh, you know, a little bit time taking process in India. So in my view, we are, we, we are better off at least three to four years. Sure. So this is the capex for this year. This is not the capex for the overall project. Like we yeah, will continue for over. next two to three years, right? It will spill because over. My sense, yeah, because it will spill my sense, over. if you are saying six lines, if you are even putting six lines plus hormone plus MAM, the capex would be much higher. That's what my sense is. I might be wrong. Over FY25 and FY26, we called out a number of 200 crores, which Correct. is between Tulin, Maps, and Hormones. It will be executed but over FY25 and 26, and the number we have called out is 200. 200. Okay. Perfect. And, and the on, uh, last one on the tax rate. We expect the tax rate, uh, you know, effective tax rate to go from 25 to 18 as we ramp up from the new plant. Uh, what's the timeline uh, and how should we see the progression? Is it gradual step jump, uh, like step down in a way in terms of ETL? So, Kunal, so gradually from 25, I think in next year we should be 23. Uh, that's how it, and then 21. By that time, I think two, three years, it will take for us to finish our mat. So once we finish our mat that is there in the ELL books, so then we uh, plan to go to 18, 18%. That's how we reach there. It's our book tax rate. Huh? Cash tax will only be 17%. Sorry, we just lost his connection, sir. We'll take the next question from Tushar Manudane from Motila Loswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. 
Yes. Am I audible? Yes. Am I audible? Yes, yes to share. You? Oh, sir, just on this side, just on this side which has been acquired, can you help us let know what's the gross block of this site? Tushar, uh, the gross block is about 65 crores and the net block is about 56 crores. And any particular reason, like you know, they got incorporated in 2020, I understand you know, they would have also taken two years to build a uh, you know, facility, but approvals and all are still to take time uh, and for that matter the sales is also yet to come. So anything you would like to highlight here? So Tushar, as far as we know, I mean, there was a there was a date for the base. The, the moot point was to get it incorporated under the new law, which uh, allows the 50% tax rate. So that's how it was incorporated after 2019, around that time, and they started their commercial manufacturing before 31st March 24. So that was the basic idea behind that. Okay. And uh, just on the comment, like all approvals in place for insulin manufacturing. So you mean which geography? Is it like more of a India? Or? Yeah, only India. Which are only India. And only the wilds have. We have the licenses for the wilds line. The cartridges line, we don't have the licenses. And the line has also to be put up. So these, at least for the India market, like at least to start with for files, cartridges and PFS, so how, like to, to start the commercial production in first place, so what is the kind of timeline one should think of? Which are, I think quarter three we should be there. Quarter three we should start the manufacturing of files first and the cartridges would take another one to one and a half year, depending upon how soon we are going to get the validation done. And, uh, and just lastly, on this particular aspect, how much subsequent further investment would be required in, in the form of capex? And in, this plant, in this plant, uh, for the insulin piece alone, we require around 25 crores. And once we start the map lines, it will be an it will be an addition. Which is a part of your the capex which you already alluded to. Right? That will, this yes, is not yes. over and above the capex. Yes, boss. Same thing. And broadly, how much opex would be there for this facility? Because I assume currently it's already uh, at least operational, if not from a compliance point of view. But uh, you start, we do not like to give that opex number. Let us start the operation first, and then we will be in a better uh, position to tell you about the opex. Um, and uh, just on my side, maybe you and I missed the explanation. Like, we are already. Uh, sorry, sir, you are sounding muffled. Uh, is this better? Can you repeat your question? Yes, go ahead, please. Is this better? Yes. Yeah, we are already at 250 crore EBITDA as we stand on 12 FY25. Right? And there is a lot of. Uh, in terms of the business, uh, scale of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, you're sounding muffled again. Organic. Is this is this better? A little better. You can Maybe ask I'll your join. question again, please. Yeah, what I was come, uh, you know, trying to ask is that we are already at 250 crore EBITDA for first quarter FI 25. And the guidance indicates that we would end FI25 by 1050 crores. Uh, just that we, the, the kind of improvement in the operations of both base business as well as acquired units, isn't that you know, too conservative? We are already at that number, more or less, you know, plus minus 10, 12 crores uh, as, as we stand today. So, Tushar, Tushar, I think, you know, from a guidance point, point of view, we'll stick to 1050. But you know, we'll be happy, very happy if it goes up. So the efforts are on the same side, but from a guidance point of view, we, we, we would like to stick there. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we'd like to remind participants to ask a question, please click on the raise and icon tab available on your toolbar or on the QA tab available on your screen. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम प्रशांत नायर फ्रॉम एम्बेड कैपिटल प्लीज गो अहेड uh yeah hi uh, amit in the past uh, you have uh, mentioned that uh, you know generally you would like to keep your ebitda margins in that 35 to 36% range and uh, look for growth uh, you know reinvest anything over and above that for growth uh now your margins seem to be uh, i mean given your guidance um, tracking a bit above those levels uh, so is there any change either in thinking or in the way the business has shaped up uh, where do you see uh, you know kind of peak ebitda margins settling say if you take the next 3 5 years as a as, as a time frame so hi prashant prashant uh, you are right look we also had a little bit of surprise because we haven't done a business which gives uh, you know 60% gross margins and 40% ebitda so there was a little bit of you know uncertainty around that piece but having spent some time with business the productivities are very nice and there is a tailwind in these businesses so i kind of uh, you know uh, will give uh, will give away that now i can see a chance of margins getting better with all that which is planned uh so certainly next year it should be better if a great changes so now i can tell you that 35% in the next 2 3 years might not be the case it should inch up okay great yeah that that's it from thank you thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen to ask a question please click on the raise and i can tab available on your toolbar We have a question from Kunal Damesha from Macquarie. Please go ahead. I thank you for the opportunity. So I thank you for opportunity. So one question for Amit. So now we have a lot of these different pieces together. I'm sorry, you sir. You have had ex- okay. Now it's better. Please is go it, ahead. Is it better? Yeah. So now you have these pieces in place. Uh, you have been with this business for. by 25 uh, you know what's the kind of growth profile of this entire consolidated business that you are looking at and what uh, you know uh, is there any investment needed is it better you think you in between yeah go ahead as i'm saying that uh, you know beyond fy 25 the growth profile of the business uh, i'm any sorry Uh, Mr. Damesh, may I request you to repeat the entire question again, please? Sure. I am saying that uh, you have acquired a lot of these businesses, and uh, you know now you spend some time. So beyond FY25, what's the growth profile of this entire consolidated business look like, and the investments which would be required to grow at that pace? So, Kunal. Uh, uh, so how do i answer this so look uh, one thing which at this point of time looks clear is that the insulin piece will see a growth going forward and we are also investing in more insulins you know this uh, we are right now covering only two pieces if everything goes well we should be launching a glp now and then there are other uh, insulins which we are investing in you know we are not present in aspart we are not present in aspart mix we are not present in uh, you know lispro we are not present in degludac which is expiring in 26 if i am not if i am not wrong so the insulin piece uh, seems to have a lot of headroom from a growth perspective both, both from the existing products and there is a possible new product pipeline which is also very exciting so we continue to invest that invest in them while we talk and we will keep on informing you at the right time that how is it uh, how is it moving ahead so that is one piece which i am quite reasonably confident the other piece which is oncology and critical care so critical care again the injectable is a large business we had promised you will be under crores this year which we will definitely be but again there is a lot of scope there uh, so one start one start, uh, things start moving that is one business which can also give us a better growth now 
simultaneously kunal the other as i as i alluded to uh, for the cardiovascular there are new products also coming in so all that investment which we made last year uh, in the rnd pipeline you know those are, will uh, in the form of product they will also show up so certainly there is some kind of a chip uh, in terms of new product available new product and growth so uh, you know this piece looks uh, to me is something which you can grow beyond you know that routine 10 12% so hopefully we should be in a trajectory for a couple of years which should be significantly beating the market okay so uh, you know follow up question for me is when i look at uh, you know the growth driver as the market for the last 3 years i'm sorry uh, we lost you again is it better now yes Yeah, so I am saying that you know when we look at IT, we have been down for three uh, years. Sorry, Namesha, I think your network signal is you know the net connectivity is a little poor. It's sounding muffled. We can't hear you. Why did you get on the call with me? Yeah, can we take the next question? I can connect with Kunal later. We'll take the next from Rahul Agrawal from Himalaya Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on a, a very good set of numbers with a sharp turnaround in the biocon business. My question is a version of what the previous participant was also asking. Uh, from here on, if you look at the next three years, uh, how, how do you see both growth and margins turning out? And if you can build up a little bit more on the numbers, like you said. Uh, the base may grow at 10-12 percent, but what rate would you expect insulin to grow at? And combining it all together, where do you think can we go on the margins? Yeah, so well, I, I, I mean, we are coming back to the same uh, same point. Look, largely what I can say, what I can tell you that we are we are better prepared for growth because of the organization moving from that speciality to super speciality. So we are. 100% we are better uh, you know uh, prepared for a better growth at this at the same point at the same point of time we are better prepared for a margin expansion also uh, but quantifying it for the next 3 years is something which is little difficult for us at this point of time but what we can tell you the macros and the way you know this this uh, the second set of diversification is happened clearly kind of you know puts up there So then the execution happens and everything happens. So we are there, but quantification would be a little difficult thing. I understand. And uh, on the Swiss parental business, uh, when we had done the acquisition, we had said that we may also look at uh, uh, starting with branded formulation sales in emerging markets. Uh, have we made up our mind around that? Is that something we want to pursue? And second, how do you see Swiss parentals shaping up over the next few years? So okay, answering the first question, which is an important thing. So there was a little bit change in the plan. First, we thought that you know we will put in the uh, injectable piece directly into Swiss, and we will run it from there. But then there was some reason which which we couldn't do this. So we actually bought it uh, in ELN itself. So that's why you see you know it is reflecting here in ELN. so uh, they are uh, swiss continues uh, continuously supports the domestic piece but in an indirect way not in a direct way uh, from an export piece export piece uh, guys look, there are a lot of stuff which is happening at this point of time we have given you the guidance for this year and i hope you appreciate the fact from export piece needs a little bit more time to kind of turn around because of you know because of regulate regulatory things but uh, if you look at the kind of approvals which we are seeking in this year they are quite significant especially the uh, the brazil piece and the switzerland piece so we would need some more time to you know get back to you on that for this year our guidance would be i mean more or less should be intact correct uh, thank you so much and congratulations once again thank you boss thank you Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may please click on the raise hand icon tab available on your toolbar, or on the Q and A tab available on your screen. We'll take a question from Prashant Nair from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. 
Uh, yeah, hi. Sorry, this is just a this is a repeat, probably. Uh, Sachin, I missed the uh, comment you uh, made about your tax aid and how it could uh, move over the next few years. Can you just repeat that? So, Prashant, I mean, we expect it to be around 25% or at, at a console level this year, and with with uh, products moving in house uh, in the in the Andhra plant and also the new acquisition that we have, gradually, I think. Every year should go down by two percent, two percent, and finally, when we because we also have a mad cat in Eris, right? So we have to consume that also in next three, four years. By that time, I think we should be there around eighteen, nineteen percent. That's where we will reach. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll take that as the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Mr. V. Krishna Kumar for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you all for your presence today. In summary, consolidated revenue for the quarter was 720 crores, which represents a 54% growth. Consolidated EBITDA for the quarter was at 250 crores, which represents a growth of 47%. We have integrated the Biocon acquisitions well ahead of schedule and started realizing significant synergies in our flagship domestic branded business, which accounts for 90% of our revenue. We expect to deliver a growth of over 25% in the Biocon segment in FY25 with a significant jump in operating margins. Our business model has evolved from a specialty model to a specialty plus super specialty model, with the addition of segments like oncology, critical care, and nephrology. As a top 20 company in the IPM, we are taking tangible initiatives to step up our game in the biotech space as well. Thank you, and have a good evening. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, members of the management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Eris Life Sciences Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now exit the meeting.